Okay, welcome everyone to the 13th chapter of the course. It's called the Evolutionary Games. Uh, this chapter is based on game theory and its applications and what happens when we have multiple agents and uh, we have kind of, we allow the agents to change their strategy over time. Okay, this was uh, a pioneering work that was uh, published I think in science like uh, a few decades ago and you can see find the reference on the on the chapter to the original article which is not uh, extremely helpful in terms of giving you the description of how you are going to simulate it so this chapter explains it a little bit more in detail and starts a little bit more from scratch or more the simplest case so the prisoner's dilemma is the most uh, simple example of the of the uh, two agent game theory uh, problem. So here the problem is the following. We have two prisoners, they have been in partners and they have, made, they have committed a crime together, right? And the police captures them and in, uh, they are uh, interrogating them independently. So they don't have uh, knowledge of the other, right? So they have been separated. So. They don't know what the other person is going to tell and they're going to come to each of them with an offer that if you confess what you have done uh, and betray your partner kind of you kind of uh, will be released but your partner will get in uh, his partner will get in in that case 15 years of prison right and if both of them remain silent because there is not overwhelming evidence that they can put them in the prison, the, the uh, returning punishment for both prisoners will be only a year. And of course, if one of them stays loyal, doesn't betray the other ones, remains silent, and then, yeah, the other one uh, is betraying. The, in this case, the one remaining silent is getting punished heavily. And if both of them betray each other, there is evidence for both of them. So it's kind of, uh, they get five years of prison each. So the problem comes as follows. If they could communicate with each other, right? They could kind of agree on remaining silent, which is the globally the best option for both of them, right? If both remain silent, they get away but by one year each. However, once you have been separated from your partner, there is no way to communicate. And you have two options, right? You either uh, speak or remain silent and you have no idea or no effect on what your partner is going to say. If you only want to maximize your own uh, benefit, in this case, it doesn't matter what your partner says. Let's say if your partner remains silent, this is this case, right? It's better for you to betray because then you get a better output, right? Instead of one year of prison, you get released. If your, uh, uh, let's see the here, if your partner is going to betray you in this case, okay, you have two options. You either remain silent or, or you also betray. In this case also, if you betray, you get away with a lower punishment. So although the, the fundamental problem comes from the fact that the global benefit of all the agents is not the same as the individual benefit. This can be used, for example, in uh, prioritizing uh, 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 patients in hospitals or uh, regularizing traffic. It's a lot of different things. Everything in society is the rules are made in a way that they will be maximize the benefit of the society, of all the individuals. But in game theory, especially in the corporate world, every single company is trying to maximize their own kind of profit or benefit from, from uh, the decision that they, they make. So this is the fundamental dilemma. And here we kind of simulate the different scenarios and observe what happens in this kind of uh, simple prisoner's games dilemma. So we have this condition and now we make it a little bit more complicated. We say that this, these prisoners are not really, they're not gonna have to, they're not going to be captured once. They are like 
robbers of bank. They go rob another bank, go in prison, come out, try another one. So they, they kind of go over and over again. So they kind of have a strategy. They say, we assume that they are going to play this game for a certain of number of rounds, right? And then both players have a strategy and this, this number and this player have a strategy M. This strategy indicates how many times they are willing to cooperate with their partner and how many times they are going to betray them, okay? So let's say this player, is his intention, initial intention is that it's going to cooperate five times and then after it will start to defect, okay? And this player has a little bit uh, less intention to cooperate, only for three rounds, and then it will start betraying. What will happen is that this is the intended strategy. What will happen at the end is not the same as the intention. This is important. Because what will happen in, the, in, in this prisoner's dilemma with many rounds is that as soon as an, as an agent gets betrayed against another one, it will change its strategy. So you see that in the fourth round, which is the first time this player intended to betray the other one, which this player couldn't have known. So it gets this betrayed once here, right? But this is a breaking point. Initially, this player intended to also cooperate in the fifth round, right? But it doesn't do it anymore. It will change its strategy. If my partner is going to betray me, I will do the same, okay? So if you think about the fact that if they keep uh, uh, cooperating for a long time, it would be better for them overall. But once they become betrayed and it's kind of, they kind of keep betraying each other because for the individual, it's better to betray the other one. Is this clear? Any questions about that? Okay. So here we kind of uh, make uh, a plot and here we kind of assume that we have a game with n rounds uh, n is equal to 10 here, okay? And we are looking into the game from a perspective of a player that is playing against a partner whose intention is to cooperate for six rounds. Okay? Is this clear? Your partner is cooperate, intending to cooperate for six rounds. Of course, it's, diff it's impossible to know this before the game. You don't know what your partner intends to do, right? But if your initial strategy is cooperating, uh, from no rounds, you will get heavily punished. Even if you get very low punishment from the first, so this is like, if your strategy is n is equal to zero, it means that you have absolutely no intention to cooperate, right? You will defect from the first uh, round. Is this clear? This n, what this means is clear, right? This is my intention, how many rounds I will be uh, trying to cooperate with my partner my intention, the number I have in mind, how long I will keep cooperating, right? If I have no, uh, I, uh, no intention whatsoever to cooperate, I will get heavily punished. The reason is that even if I get very low punishment in the first round, because I defect and my partner gets uh, uh, a lot of punishment, what will happen is that the game is very long. At the end, I will end up having more punishments. Of course, this curves, this, slope of these curves are dependent on the parameters of what are the different punishments, okay? And here, as you keep cooperating longer and longer rounds, if your partner strategy is six, for example, here, the, it means that your partner is willing to cooperate for six rounds. You can just defect the round before, or you can cooperate with five rounds and uh, defect just one round before your partner, that is the strategy that is maximizing your own benefit, kind of. Is this clear? And in that case, after that, if you have been willing to cooperate six round, seven rounds, eight rounds, nine rounds, 10 rounds, it doesn't matter because these are not actually implemented. Because if your partner betrays before you, your intended strategy, become, uh, your implemented strategy will become six. Is this clear? Okay. And this is kind of a 2D, very similar to this one, but here, what we show here is uh, this one, six. 
okay, here. And dashed lines are different. Here, the dashed line indicates the strategy of the opponent, partner player. Here, the dashed line indicates the best strategy. So the, as a function of uh, the opponent's strategy, what should be the, these are the output punishments of, of my agent on, as a function of intended strategy. Is this clear? So you see a pattern here. In general, as you go in this direction in the plot, which means they become more and more cooperative, right? The overall punishment colors cool down, which means that they receive lower punishment, right? Even for, uh, uh, yeah, for example, uh, if my opponent is, is not willing to cooperate at all, it's a different story. But if my, uh, let's say if my opponent is cooperative, let's say he has a strategy of 10 right here, I can defect in the first round. And in that case, I get a very low point, right? And if I defect in the later rounds, I always get better and better and better uh, result until the round before. The here, I can kind of take advantage of the opponent once. So this kind of uh, taking advantage of your opponent in this N round prisoner dilemma game can only happen once because then your partner will start to kind of uh, wake up or oh, my partner is defecting against me. So I should also defect and you cannot really sustain this kind of uh, collaboration anymore. So the ideal strategy is you kind of de defect just one round before. Is this clear? Okay. Uh, so now we are going to explain how what happens when we have a lattice of players. This is, I understand this is uh, getting a little bit more complicated and a lot of people have been confused and sending me emails about this. So this is important. So what will happen is that we have a lattice of players, okay? Each lattice side, there is one player. And at each time step, they will play game, this prisoner's dilemma with N rounds with all of its neighbors, but not at once. These two will play, receive a punishment score each. These two will play, receive a punishment score each. These two will play, receive a punishment score each, right? And at the end of every time step, every player has played a total amount of four games, right? Receive punishments from all these four games that they played with all of their neighbors. And then these are, let's say hypothetically, these are the number of overall punishments they receive end of the round. And these indicate their strategy, these colors. You see, they have different strategies of uh, intention of uh, cooperation. And here, what, what happens at the end of each, this is the competition part. This is the revision part. At the end of each round, I am centered on this agent here in this, in this kind of example scheme. Here, this agent looks around, who did the best in this round? Who did the best in this time step? This agent above me, who had uh, strategy zero, did a very good score. So I, I, I think I'm going to implement his strategy. It copies its strategy to itself, right? And then at the end of every time step, there is also mutation. With the probability of mu, every agent is changing its strategy to another random number. Is this clear? Okay. So we start with the simple example first. We, we consider that the agents have to by, there is binary strategies first. So either they have the intention of uh, zero, of zero rounds of cooperation or seven rounds of cooperation. And we have a game of seven rounds. This is just simply how uh, I plotted the figure. So you kind of can follow the same algorithm and don't confuse that here it was 10, the representation of the number of rounds. Here it's seven, so it's kind of different, okay? So here also, it's important to have the parameters. Here, I assume that if uh, this T is the punishment when you betray against the cooperator, you don't get punished because you get released. This R is called reward when two agents cooperate with each other. P is punishment when both of them defect each other. S is called sucker, kind of you uh, try to cooperate against a betrayer, okay? 
these are the number of prison times that you uh, uh, receive at the end of each game. Of course, every game is seven rounds. So for example, if you have a defector and all of your neighbors are defector, every round, both of you will get punished by one, one point, right? So you will receive, uh, uh, there are seven rounds, seven points, seven years in prison total, right? From each game. And in this case, that's why this agent in the middle is receiving 28 years in prison. Is this clear? Because it has four defector neighbors, no cooperation at all. And when they don't cooperate each against each other, they kind of get uh, uh, seven years of prison from like one year of prison from each round of the game, seven years of prison for with the game with each neighbor, which they have four neighbors, 28, right? But what happens with this agent? This agent is a defector, but it's surrounded by three cooperators, right? And then it is uh, uh, also have one uh, defector. Here we need to really calculate. Of course, this is a code that is calculating this, but to understand what's going on here, what will be the output point that uh, this guy received, output number of prison years? The game with this neighbor that is a defector, how many prison years it will receive? This players, this player plays with this player. Both of them are defector, right? They will get both punishment at the end of each round, which means that they will get seven years of prison, right, each. So this one with playing with this agent, it will get seven years of prison. And it will also play against three neighbors, uh, three uh, uh, cooperators, right? Is this correct? So it will get the same score, three times the same score from each of these three neighbors, which is, if it plays with this agent, what will happen? The game is seven rounds. The first round, our agent will get zero because he's defecting against a cooperator. It gets the temptation zero. And for the rest of the six rounds, they will also betray this guy. They will, it will get six years of punishment from each of these agents, right? At the end, this agent will get six. So this will end up seven plus 18, 25 years in prison, this agent receives. Is this clear how total number of punishment for each agent at every time step is calculated? Because it seems like a lot of people got really confused. We don't play at any time with like five neighbors all together. We always play games with this and this, this and this, this and this, like this, okay? And then at the end of each round, this is the number of total punishments. You see that the cooperative agents are getting overall better scores than the defective agents, right? This is 28 years, this is 25 years in prison, which is better, 25, right? However, if an agent defector is surrounded by cooperators, this seems like this is doing better than the cooperative agents on the other side, right? Slightly better. So what will happen at the end of this round? This agent here that received 26 something years in prison, will look around and see that this guy had a defecting strategy and got better points than all of my agents. So I will obtain his strategy. Right, it will update its strategy to defection in the next round. The same with this guy, because it's seeing this guy that is the best, this guy seeing that is the best, this guy, this guy, it will expand like this in the next round. However, here it, where a lot of people didn't actually understand how the symmetry is breaking, that it's not developing. Of course, these are dependent strongly on these parameters. I chose these parameters very, uh, uh, sensitively in a way that it will not like spread all over the lattice at once because what will happen here is that you see these edge elements on these edges when they look around it's the same thing they still see that the defecting neighbor that they have has better score than all the other neighbors that they have but when this agent looks around 
okay? You see this agent, it's actually seeing that its collaborative neighbor has received a better score than its defective neighbors, because here the defective neighbors have two defective neighbors instead of one for these guys. So this guy doesn't, didn't really do a very good score. So these guys don't really envy this guy. They don't care. They don't see that, oh, this defective guy didn't do very well, so I won't do it. So they kind of keep obtaining their neighbor's strategy, which, is, uh, which did better than the defective neighbor. So what will happen is that this guy in the edges, in these x, y directions, they will implement the neighbor's strategy because 25 is lower than 25.2. But these guys won't implement their neighbor's strategy. Is this clear? The top one is the under, under the x-axis. The lowest level is 25, but it's the legal one. This one. Uh, yeah, no. This one. No, uh, or, or at the side of that one. Ah, uh, this one. Yes, this one will also adopt, sorry. Yeah, because it's a neighbor of 25, you're right. Because, and also this one, the same. So only the surrounding of the edge element, which has only one defective neighbor, is going to do better, so it will keep expanding. But you see that already that the symmetry is already broken, right? It's exp expanding in this direction, but not in these diagonal directions. So that is why in, for these kind of parameters, we obtain these kind of uh, patterns that if I, of course, these are the simplest cases when we have only two different strategies, zero or seven. So we either intend to eat always cooperate or always defect. And we don't have any mutation here. It's very important. For this case, we just want to explore what happens to the pattern. You see that they kind of, uh, these kind of interesting patterns form for this kind of uh, uh, set of parameters. And these patterns really depend on how many initial defectors I put in the lattice. And you can try different things. You can put random uh, places, stuff like that. And you will see this kind of pattern formation. Okay, and often I get asked, why is this agent don't convert? Because it's the neighbor above is, uh, here, the, 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 the idea is very simple for these parameters. These parameters are chosen in a way that if a defector has two defecting neighbors, it's going to score worse than a cooperator, OK? So the, its neighbors are not going to copy its strategy, right? This is what I observe at the end as well for this agent, because this has no neighbors or no, no defector neighbor that has more than one defecting neighbors that has uh, no less than two defecting defecting neighbors because this neighbor of his has one two defecting neighbors the same with this one one two the same with this one one two so all of these neighbors this one this one and this one will score worse than the above neighbor this neighbor that is a cooperator and it's surrounded by four cooperators so it will always be better than these ones so for this agent, when it looks around, it will look always up and see its cooperative neighbor that is doing better than its defective neighbors. So it will decide that, okay, I will keep cooperating because my neighbor up there is cooperating and doing very good. Is this clear? This is why this agent stays this way, even if it's surrounded by the cooperate, uh, defectors, kind of. Is this clear? Any questions so far from the chat? Okay, so then we move on here. So now I introduce the factor of mu, which is the mutation, right? So if I have a mutation, we kind of uh, have a more dynamical, randomly changing pattern, right? Usually we observe very often in this kind of uh, simulations a like a diagonally spreading or propagating waves of cooperation or defection and of course this is very sensitive with parameters and of course these parameters also depend on the number of rounds some people uh, ask often that i don't get the same parameters i get slightly different parameters is probably because it, 
either that you chose the other parameters a little bit differently or they chose the number of rounds differently. Okay, so that these parameters, so in general, these parameters quantitatively don't really matter much because they really depend on other parameters and the number of rounds. But the qualitative behavior here is very important. When the reward for cooperation is high, which means that uh, they receive low amount of prison, it becomes favorable for co cooperators here. You see that they, the, the, it ends up being much more cooperate, cooperators than defectors. Here, the blue is the cooperation. And you can also find the parameter range where there is a little bit of a balance between the population of the cooperators and defectors. Of course, the, as the rewards get lower and lower, means that punishment for cooperation gets higher and higher in terms of prison years, uh, the defection dominates the, the entire map. Is this clear? OK. And this is a, uh, the most general example. And here, instead of having a strategy of either zero or seven, like I defect all of the rounds or I cooperate all of the rounds, each agent has an intended number of rounds to cooperate with its neighbors, okay? Is this clear? So what will happen here is that it's very, uh, it's this chapter in general is quite counterintuitive, but it's, that's also why it's beautiful. That's why we observe these things. Because if you think about the fact that if we have agents that are four, like if we have agents that intend to cooperate four rounds, what is the best strategy for them against them? If you have a partner that is intending to cooperate four rounds, what should be my strategy to get the best score? Three, right? I always need to intend one less, right? That's what happens is that if you have a agents of seven, you see this is a wave kind of, there is a cooperator cluster here. What will happen is that this, these are the people that intend to cooperate six times. What will happen is that these guys keep converting these guys as they move. Why is that? Because these guys will look, oh, these guys do better because uh, they betray just one round before. It's a better strategy, right? But it's the same with this guy because this is like kind of chased by a wave of cooperation, intended cooperation of five rounds, right? Of course, these are not always like this. It depends, of course, in the parameters that I impose in the simulation. But it is always like that and like that and like that. It goes all the way back. Of course, here, the cooperators, uh, the, sorry, the defectors, the, the, the very low number of rounds here, when they see a cluster of cooperators, they also look at them. And then because these guys for cooperate for a very long time, and these within each other for defect for a long time, at the end, these get a better score. So six beats seven, like five beats six, four beats five, but also seven beats zero. Because they, the, the, the game is not only a single round. So the longer you cooperate, you get overall better score just because it's many rounds, right? So what happens is that these can also propagate against the infectors, the sevens. So they go this way and they go this way, they go this way. Of course, this is uh, not always like this simple because it's much more chaotic, especially if we include the parameter mu, that is the mutation. Each time we kind of boop, pop a point like this one, for example, or I don't know, this one. You see obviously that this is a mutation. Right? Because for this guy, immediately, this guy can't exist like this because it's surrounded by defectors. In the next round, it, it, it is receiving less score than all of its neighbors because it's just a guy trying to cooperate within a sea of defectors. It's gonna score less than all of its neighbors and convert to defector in the next round. And we can, that's why we can immediately say that this is a mutation here. So once in a while, these mutations occur and kind of perturb the lattice structure. But what will happen is that these different strategies start emerging and also disappearing in kind, kind of waves of population over time. And you will see that some strategies 
depending on the parameters, we'll have an overall lower population than some others, but most strategies uh, are going to fluctuate in this case. Is this clear? So in this kind of, in this kind of an environment, the most important parameters become, of course, we have four parameters, right? Let's say, P, uh, R, uh, P, N, S. So for taking the simplicity, this is what I recommend in the lecture notes as well to do. You can take always T, which is uh, the kind of, uh, when you get temptation, you, you, you betray your cooperator friend. You can make this zero because modifying four variables is always very difficult because the problem will come down to two parameters at the end because you are always comparing the numbers. So you can set this to one as well, right? And then in that case, you only uh, need to uh, uh, tune two parameters in the simulation, okay? And also here, uh, this is a case where we actually really engineer the parameters for this to happen. It doesn't happen for all the parameters. Sometimes if the parameters are not fair for cooperation, they might kind of end up every, for all the agents to go back to zero, which is the defecting regime where this red population will uh, dominate the map and it will kind of stabilize. It might happen, and also the the opposite can happen. If the reward is uh, is strong, then the cooperative strategy might start to dominate more and more. In this case, uh, uh, but what will happen is that if the reward is strong, it won't be in a way that this strategy seven will all of a sudden dominate the entire map because still six beats seven. So it's kind of an asymmetric. So it will be a kind of, instead of these strategies that, that are more defecting, it will be oscillating between kind of these three, or it will kind of the population uh, oscillations will be uh, uh, reduced to only these, these colors. And as, as long as you increase, uh, decrease the punishment, wait, uh, increase the reward for, uh, no, decrease the reward for cooperating, there will be more of these colors that are red and yellowish colors that will kind of dominate the population. But you will always see this kind of, in Game of Life, for example, what do we see? We see these kind of uh, weird structures, right? They're really unique that propagate along certain directions or oscillators, they are very unique. Here we see different kind of uh, behavior, which is the diagonal expansion or diagonal waves we often observe here, okay? So it's kind of, a, that is the difference. And it's, it's always, uh, this also can be interpreted as a cellular automata uh, type of simulation because that's what we are doing at the end. We have a lattice structure, we have an agent at each lattice site and we update the status of the game at each step. Is this clear? Any questions about this so far? No? Okay. I think this was the yeah last slide. So this lecture ends here. So we can maybe, what time is it now? 10.35. Is it okay if we come back and start at maybe 10.45? So we finish earlier. Okay, thank you. We can have a break of 10 minutes.